So I'm coming to you from Miami Beach, Florida, where we just finished the Integrated Band Summit, and I've got a special video for you. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to get better with women, dating, approaching, freedom from outcome, building your confidence, all 10 times faster than you normally would. This became an impromptu talk at the Integrated Band Summit because I noticed that so many of the guys were having trouble in this area. This was really a big problem. And if you really wanna change this area, you'll take this video very seriously, probably watch it more than once. Um, also, the fifth step in this is going to be uh, a powerful step, so stay tuned till the end because it's one that I don't know that I've ever really shared much, but it's one of the key components I use to personally shift my life on a big level. I use it all the time. We're gonna take a moment, we're gonna take a break together, and I'm just gonna show you. There we go. It's beautiful out there, isn't it? This is where I sit and have my uh, morning coffee and I read. I actually use this nice gushy chair that's right behind me. I open this door, I let the breeze in, and I do my morning ritual right here with the breeze and the sun coming in. So let's dive into today's topic. Let's talk about the 1% rule. This is one I talk about a lot at Fearless. I talk about it in a lot of workshops. I've talked about it on this channel. I've referenced it recently. It's a simple principle. If you get good at changing only 1% a day or less than 1%, let's say 1 100th of a percent, your life will radically shift in a very short period of time. Everybody's looking for that quantum leap. And it's not that the quantum leap doesn't exist. Um, who I learned this from, he hated the quantum leap because the quantum leap implied that there's going to be this magic thing and you're going to change overnight. Well, the quantum leap is just compounding interest. If you look at a compounding interest chart, you can change a penny into $10 million by doubling it every day for 31 days. And so compounding interest is like one of the eighth wonders of the world. When applied properly, it has a super powerful effect. And the way it looks is the bulk of the time you're learning, it doesn't look like much is happening. But in reality, it's like a, a seed is digging roots and getting ready, building the foundation, and the building goes up really fast. Well, the same thing happens here. With compounding interest, step number one, you uh, literally uh, will have this point where when you've got all the foundation right, you just seem to go up and everything seems to take off. So I wanna invite you into this idea of uncompounding interest. And I really want you to take a deeper look at this. And how you're gonna do that is A, watch my older video. We'll put a little link to it on the channel here around compounding interest. And there's one specifically I want you to watch. I have two actually on the channel. There's one that's about compounding interest directly, but the other one, is how to succeed big. And it's me giving a talk in Bucharest, Romania on a stage. I got a little heart behind me. Definitely check that video out. I'll go deeper into it. And I'll also in that video, I referenced the source and the book I used to really delve deep into this principle and understand it at a huge level. Highly recommend that book. Check out that video to find out more about that. And this is also in this video that I want you to watch on how to succeed big is to learn to love failure. If you learn to love failure, and I mean love failure, enjoy failure, celebrate failure. There was a guy um, that was a friend of um, Mark Allen, who's the publisher of the New World Library, great author in his own right, who said that we should have a birthday for our glorious failures everywhere. We should celebrate failures. We need to collect failures because the most successful people in the world succeed through failure. And I'm not talking about through struggle, they actually laugh at their own failures. They, they joke. Like when we go out, I was out yesterday with Sam and Anthony and we were out in Brickell and we were having a great time flirting with girls. And if something went wrong, let's say a girl rejected us and it was really cold, we would just laugh about it together. It was part of our, we'd sit down and have coffee later and celebrate all the, the women that rejected us and laugh because they're just having a moment. They're not in the mood right now anyways. An hour later, they might be happy. That's happened to me actually. So hopefully you're getting a lot of value out of this video. Make sure to like, make sure to subscribe, make sure to hit that bell notification. Make sure to comment. We love those comments. We, we constantly looking at them and also make sure to share the video. Help us to grow this channel uh, because the bigger it gets, the more awesome content we can bring you. I'm so comfortable with failure or I appreciate at least and I've learned to be comfortable with failure because I used to hate it. I can laugh at at it and a lot of times it turns around. I remember one time I went into this bar and I was flirting with the different girls and this one girl was just utterly rude and cold and mean to me. And I was like, okay. So I, I rolled off and I think I came back and encountered her again a half hour later, 45 minutes, maybe an hour. And suddenly she was friendly. I don't even know if she remembered me the last time, to be honest. And pretty soon she's sitting on my lap and we're laughing, we're making out, we're having a great old time together. You see, when you get rejected in the moment, you take it so personal, but it might just be the moment. It has nothing to do with you. She doesn't know you, right? Just like if you get to know her and you figure out that she's rude and not nice and 
or, or she's demanding or something that you, you don't want, you don't have to sit there and make her happy. You can excuse yourself and move on. So again, celebrate failures. Matter of fact, make a journal that says my glorious failures and and every failure I want you to write it down as if each failure is a rung to success it's taking to the next level kind of like the idea of the uh, of the salesman who knows he needs 10 no's to get a yes when he's selling so he has 10 marbles in his pocket and every time he gets a no he moves the marble to the next pocket and uh, when he knows as that pocket's getting bigger he's getting closer and closer to his yes so he's really excited to collect his nose okay so this is the next piece I want you to play with. Celebrate failures, write that down, write both of these down, okay? Um, another one that's really important that I see clients really mess up all the time and that I messed up for a long time is fully committed action. Relaxed, fully committed action. Don't stay pump and tense up, but don't take action from this let me see and try kind of place. If you're taking action from try, something that would work will then fail. I'll say that again. If you're taking action from a trying energy, let me try this out, let me see. Something that could or would work will fail. I'm gonna give you a real example. I was in a bar with my business partner many years ago, and I always remember this one. I don't know why, it just stands out in my mind. I've seen this a million times, but this one stands out. We were sitting there watching this guy try to get up the nerve to approach these two women. The bar was pretty much empty. It was actually a restaurant bar. He finally got up and he worked his way across the bar slowly towards these two really pretty Asian girls who were drinking and having a good time. And they were just having a blast. They were being free from outcome in the moment. And he walks up and he's like half in, half out. He's like, um, hi, uh, don't mean to bother you. Just, just wanna say hi. You know, how you ladies doing? And you felt this energy going this way, then this way, then this way, then this way. He's like, you know, if you wanna hang out later. And there was this energy and they were giggling and laughing kind of at him to be honest, because he was doing such a poor job. And I felt really bad for him, but I used to be that guy, that's probably why I felt bad. And I realized in that moment, that we gotta get you guys to stop trying. If he had fully committed, even if he wasn't good, he would have learned a lot more. If he walked over and said, hi, I, you know what? I have no idea what to say to you ladies, but I just wanted to say hi. You know, my name's Tom, whatever it is. Then he would have had a much better reaction than this half in, half out, uh, tiptoeing around kind of energy. He would have learned something even if they rejected him. He might have got a smile and a, oh wow, you're, you're really confident, I'm, you know, we're taken. But it would have been a different energy uh, about it and he could learn faster and faster. So, so fully committed, relaxed action. I say relaxed because a lot of you guys fully commit and you tense up so that we don't want that either. And um, we want to get relaxed in your body, but hey, I'm going to show up. Uh, you can even tell a woman you're nervous. Say, you know what, you make me nervous. I did that what? Two days ago, I was I approached a woman over here in Brickle, and I uh, actually wasn't as nervous as maybe a hair nervous because she was really beautiful and I thought she was sexy and there was something about her. But uh, but in reality, I had, I had tried a kratom drink. I think I had uh, uh, I forgot how many grams of kratom, and I was like wired like this, and <laughs> and I walked up and I was like, Jesus Christ, my mind can't even focus straight, and I was kind of jittery, and maybe if I had some nerves, they were extra, extra amplified. Because I do get nervous all the time. It happens, you know. It's part of what makes it fun. Like she's really sexy. I really want to meet her. She makes me nervous. So there's this mild nervousness maybe running in. The kratom just amplified everything, and and I walked up and said, "Excuse me," and I and I just looked at her and I said, "You know what? You know I'm nervous right now." Because she got a little nervous too, and she she got nervous and blushed. I went, "You know, you're making me nervous too," and something like that. I, I can't. I don't remember the exact words. And then we just kind of had a moment, stared into each other's eyes, and it went from there. So fully committed action, own that, own who you're being, own what you're feeling, right? And go from there. The next one, let's talk about that one. Follow through on something that you commit to do to a level of completion. A lot of people love to stop halfway through something they decide to do. Let's say you go out some day to do 100 highs or 50 highs or 25 highs. Set a number you really feel like you can do, but you're always stopping halfway through. Let's say you commit to the next three months of approaching two women a day, but you stop halfway through and you don't get back on the horse. See, if you do stop, get back on the horse right away. And a lot of people quit. I see this all through life. Well, it wasn't meant to be, or you start to learn to get good with women. It gets a little hard. You have a few failures and you quit. And you go, you know what? It's just not, women are bitches. I'm gonna go become red pill. I'm gonna go hate all women for the rest of my life. And what that does, when you quit halfway through something, it's a real problem because 
you think you don't want to like halfway through the tension builds anxiety builds all your stories as to why you're nervous about doing it build when you first start you're excited i'm gonna go learn to meet women this is gonna be amazing oh my god i can't wait to do it but then halfway through as you're going through and the tension is rising the vulnerability is rising because all your stories about self-doubt all your stories around failure all your stories around um being good enough come up and then they reach a, a point, a big point where they're, they're really coming to the surface and you want to quit and run back. And what you do is you blame the situation. Uh, women are all bitches. The situation, it's not going to work. I can't do it. I'm not good enough. Something like that. And then you turn around and, and you, you quit and you just kind of write it off. I see people do this with business all the time. They start a business, decide that's not the right business, go to the next one. Start another business, decide that's not the right business. And what's happening is the tension's building and their stories are coming up. The most successful people in the world make, up the, make decisions quickly and change their minds slowly. Napoleon Hill talks about this in Think and Grow Rich. Go read that chapter. Very important. He talks about the power of that, okay? That making decisions quickly and changing your mind slowly has such a huge effect on your subconscious mind. If you commit to uh, a, a certain activity and you always quit halfway through, that's a bad pattern. Get to Commit to a certain level. I'm going to do this for three months and I want to accomplish this minimum goal. And show yourself you can do that. Show yourself you can get to that level. Don't overcommit. Don't undercommit. Don't get to where, commit to the point where it's boring and don't overcommit. And when you do that, you're going to really radically start to change your life because every time you hit that level of success if you want to change your mind then and go do something else that's great but when you hit that level of success you'll have another win in your belt and uh, all along the way you'll be celebrating the little failures you know today was a rough day this happened this girl rejected me but uh, but in the end you'll see that all those failures led to the completion of your goal and then you can write that in the in the journal when you go to the next goal and every time you complete a goal you start to feel more powerful. You build a sense of self-trust, which is so freaking important, guys. So important. Build that self-trust. And um, what you're going to find is a lot of times when you set a goal, you're excited. Midway through, you lose interest. Really listen to this. Set a goal, excited. Midway through, you lose interest because of the tension, the vulnerability, and oh my God, what's going on? And then when you get to the other side and you actually complete it, you're excited again and you loved it and you're so glad you did it. And I want you to think about all the times you've done that. So that's why you have to ride something through to a level of completion. So you build that cycle and that self-trust in yourself. So analyze your life right now. Don't hindsight, look into your life in hindsight. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. And notice that all the places you've done that and how much better you felt because you followed through, okay? Learning from hindsight, this is so important. I was talking about this this weekend, is that a lot of you guys wanna analyze and get all the answers ahead of time. Now, now don't analyze, don't sit there and think and try to contemplate all the what ifs and what could happen. Get a basic plan, take some action, and get some real visceral experience and then learn from hindsight. Based on your real, actual, real world experience, you can sit down and go, wow, this happened, that happened, okay, this happened. What am I realizing? Not what am I analyzing, but what am I realizing about this? What is life showing me about this? And that'll tell you what next action to take. Get good at learning from hindsight. Take a little bit of action, get some realizations. You think enough to make a plan. I'm gonna go in this direction, but you gotta realize the plan is gonna be changing a lot as you go towards your goal. The actions are gonna change a lot as you go towards your goal. As you have experience, that's gonna shift things a little bit. And then it's gonna shift things this way. You have to be constantly adjusting. And so you've got to take action and then you learn from the hindsight and you get realizations and understanding. And that's the big one that I wanted to share with you guys. That one has been huge for me. And I don't know that I've ever really said it like that on this channel. So if you take that one in, I think it can be a huge winner for you. So make sure to check out these other videos I mentioned in the video, uh, how to succeed big, how to succeed big covers failure and the 1% rule and talks about an amazing book that you can read to, to get a deep understanding of this that'll really help you to change this area of your life at a big level. If you really wanna take it in versus just have a, a light understanding of it, you really need to dig in and watch either this video over again, watch that video, watch them both, and really take these concepts in because if you apply these principles, they can have a radical shift. Also, make sure to check out Napoleon Hill's book, Think and Grow Rich, one of the most successful personal growth books of all time, if not the most successful, but particularly a chapter, I believe it's on commitment. That's the chapter that talks about how the most successful men and women of his time, 500 that he interviewed over all those years, 
take action quickly and change your mind slowly if ever at all. So with that all said, love talking to you, love sharing all this from Miami, and remember, only the confident really live. See you in the next video, take care.